COVID-19, is it threatening our cities? As you're staying at home, canceling all your social gatherings and your summer vacation plans, what are your thoughts on how this crisis is changing our cities? High density and connectivity are what make our cities exciting places to live. Yet they also make virus to spread very rapidly. We are seeing our big and globally connected cities become a hotbed of COVID-19. We are also continuously reminded to avoid going to crowded places and to minimize human contact. So we're basically told to stop living an urban life. The technologies available today also seem to indicate that we can now live and work online. Well, back in the late 1980s, scholars had actually predicted the death of cities with the advent of ICT. Today, cities are where more than half of the world's populations live, and they generate more than 80% of global GDP. Technology is not replacing cities, and one of the main reasons is because face-to-face -face interaction is important. We're seeing a rising trend of remote working during this pandemic. But this is likely made possible because people have already built the personal relationships and learned the tacit knowledge working offline so far. You might say, well, it seems like I can get everything ordered online these days, even the groceries and meals, and get them delivered to my door. Well, but think about it. This whole delivery system works because we live in close proximity to one another, making deliveries a profitable business. The benefit of concentrating people and economic activities is way too great. And the deadly diseases that have wiped out cities before, such as the Black Death of the 14th century, and the Spanish flu in the early 20th century, which, by the way, infected the one-third of the world's population, did not deter the growth of cities at all. Cities are very resilient, and they will not be disappearing anytime soon. Yet, changes can take place. If history teaches us anything, it is that pandemics come and go, but cities persist and can even advance with the lessons learned from the pandemic experience. For example, a yellow fever outbreak in Philadelphia in 1793 led to the development of municipal waterworks. It also allowed cities to see the importance of public sanitation. And throughout the following years, cities in the US carried out major planning reforms and established their sanitation departments. During the cholera outbreaks in the 19th century, London realized that the disease was caused by the contaminated water in the city, leading to the development of modern sewer system. In New York, its iconic Central Park was built to act as urban lungs and to help supply clean water throughout the city with its big reservoirs. In Paris, the epidemics triggered to the city's massive renovation and public works. And its chaotic and cramped slum streets were replaced with wide boulevards, open public squares, and of course, a new sewer system. The epidemics in the 19th century taught cities to transform themselves into a modern city with new urban, development, urban infrastructure developments and much improved public sanitation. Then, what can our cities today learn from the coronavirus pandemic. I'm sure there are many interesting ideas out there, but I would like to share with you the following three points. The first point is that the COVID-19 is exposing the urban inequality as the major problem that needs to be solved by cities today. COVID-19 is actually thriving in unequal societies that have people living in subpar conditions. For example, imagine that you're living in an urban slum. With limited access to clean water, the most basic prevention of washing your hands as frequently as possible can seem like a luxury that you cannot afford, right? Also, 
practicing social distancing seems almost impossible when you're living in these cramped spaces, sharing a room with others, often the entire family. Toilets are highly insufficient, and one toilet could be shared by as many as hundreds, and if not thousands, of slum dwellers. We just imagine briefly what it might be like to face this COVID-19 for one billion people out there living in slums today. For those of you from more advanced countries, I'm sure you're witnessing how COVID-19 is exposing some of the entrenched urban inequalities in your society. In the case of Singapore, the city was once hailed as the gold standard in managing its COVID-19. Its situation quickly turned sour when virus outbreaks started to take place in overcrowded dormitories of foreign workers. Tucked away and hidden from this beautiful urban landscape of Singapore, the congested living quarters of temporary foreign migrant workers became the city's epicenter of coronavirus. In Seoul, its major outbreak in a call center revealed the cramped working spaces without windows and other precarious working conditions driven by the cutthroat competition among the subcontracting call centers. And of course, in the US, its racial inequity is being highlighted with much higher number of Latinos and blacks catching the virus than the whites. Who can afford to work from home using conference calls? Who has to take crowded transport and go to the crowded workplace? Whose jobs are being lost because of this COVID-19? And who has a better chance of coming back once the pandemic is over? Automation is nothing new for sure. Yet COVID-19 is speeding up this process replacing many of the jobs in especially those in lower skilled manufacturing and service sectors. Without dedicated policy measures, inequality is expected to worsen significantly. If the 19th century epidemics have revealed unsanitary urban environment as a problem to be addressed, I say that the coronavirus pandemic is trying to teach us that the cities have to get together and solve this urban inequality problem. As the cities in the past have come up with then innovative planning solutions to become a modern city, I hope that the cities today can find creative and workable policy solutions to become more equitable and inclusive city. My second point is that the cities are learning to connect with each other with compassion and solidarity during the COVID-19. So this kind of resonates with what Dean mentioned earlier this morning as well. I want to especially share this story. When Taegu was hit hard by the COVID-19 in early March, it was struggling to find enough hospital beds to hospitalize its increasing number of patients. Gwangju was the very first city that voluntarily offered to bring and treat patients from Taegu. The city of Daegu remembered this kindness and reciprocated in early July, when Gwangju began to now face the sudden increase of its COVID-19 cases. I find this story particularly heartwarming because the two cities represent the two regions in South Korea that have been politically somewhat conflicting for decades. The city-to-city -city support extends beyond borders as well. In early February, before its own outbreak, Daegu had sent face masks to Wuhan. And in March, Wuhan and a few other Chinese cities sent face masks and other protective medical equipment to Daegu, showing their support. Cities are also connecting in a for more formal network. The Metropolitan Government of Seoul launched a global summit called Cities Against COVID-19. To build a platform of collaboration and solidarity, it brought together mayors and experts online, of course, to share the COVID-19 response strategies. C40 Cities, which is a global network of mega cities to fight climate change, also convened mayors from all around the world to discuss the ways to fight this COVID-19 and to share the lessons learned so far. It seems like 
while deglobalization is going on, or the talk about deglobalization is going on, the cities are ever more strengthening their international ties and trying to collaborate to fight this crisis together. COVID-19, of course, brought out the worst in us in some ways. People fought over toilet papers, racial attacks have been increasing in a number of cities, and plenty of blames and accusations were being made. Yet, it is also bringing out the good in us. We're seeing the rise of compassion, mutual support, and collaboration. Cities are especially showing us that they're capable of building solidarity, moving political, beyond political differences, historical animosities, and even ideological tensions. I hope this trend can carry forward with cities realizing the power of cooperation over competition. If cities can come together, build strong urban network, both domestically and globally, I think we'll have a better chance of building a better future in our new urban world. So in today's globalization, cities have been considered as the main economic engines of growth. And their development has been much driven by the global capital investments, right? And cities themselves have been in a competitive race to build the tallest skyscrapers and iconic mega projects to catch the global tension and to basically fulfill and meet the interests of the global capital. But COVID-19 is absolutely putting on hold this fast and massive development in cities. Those of us who are used to the busy and hectic urban lifestyles are also forced to slow down. It's very happy days for puppies, actually. Um, <laughs> as we look for grocery shops within walking distance and search for nearby parks to take a stroll, see the clear blue skies in one of the heavily polluted cities, we're beginning to question whether cities can and should be different. There is now an increasing interest in smaller scale planning of urban communities that could allow for more local lifestyle even in big cities. City leaders are seeking to encourage more cycling and walking and to provide greater access to green pathways. And the 15 minute city launched by the mayor of Paris is getting much attention. The basic idea is to build self-sufficient neighborhoods where you can find everything you need within just 15 minutes of walking or cycling from your home. Crisis can be an opportunity that pushes us to be more creative, make difficult decisions, and to take necessary actions for change. If we take a positive spin on this, the COVID-19 could be the much needed impetus for cities to finally and fully commit to the sustainable development goals and to respond to the climate change. It is an emergency break that makes cities to pause and regroup and to take full charge of their future development path. How our cities will change after COVID-19 will depend on what we decide to do now and whether or not we fully commit to concrete actions. It is our responsibility to connect and work together to leave a meaningful legacy. When our future generations look back at how our cities changed after COVID-19, what will they say? What do you want them to say? Thank you. <laughs>